Unreal Engine moves fast with multiple updates per year. There are lots of videos about how to move information between Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine, but what's still relevant in 2025? So today we're looking at a simple Cinema 4D scene. It's got a flag waving in the background. It's got some spline wraps animating, as you can see, and we've got some cloned trees that you can't yet see, but will turn on for the transfer. Now I won't be talking about materials because you have to think of Unreal as its own renderer. And in that vein, you would want to set up materials that are specific to that renderer so they look the best that they can. Today we're just going to be focusing on the techniques of transferring data from Cinema 4D into Unreal. And right now in February of 2025, what works is a combination of Cineware and Alembics. Cineware is probably the fastest way to get most things in, like base geometry, cameras and keyframed animation, but Alembics are needed for a lot of cases where you have deformed objects and point level animations. Let's start off with Cineware because that's the kind of official one. And you'll notice that like, I've gone through and installed the version that you download from the Cinema 4D website in both Cinema 4D, where you would go to um, extensions, Unreal Direct Link, and then it's here. Here we're going to go to just Direct Link Sync first. It takes a little while, not too long. Now over here, when we go to the plus button, we're in a blank level called C4D Transfer. And let's go to Datasmith Direct Link Import. It'll show this here and go select. Just gonna chuck it in here. Let's just try and do everything. And then we'll see what the uh, benefits and pitfalls are. Now, a well-known problem is that when the camera comes in, for some reason it has the exposure ticked on, which is obviously uh, not exactly what you want. Um, but you still won't be able to see anything because there's no lights. So I just generally set it over to unlit for a little bit. And if I come into the folder that it's created, you can see we've got a lot of different things here. Um, the geometries, yep, that's exactly what we want. We don't want a hundred different trees. We just want one that's been cloned. And uh, we want an animation level sequence. So what I'll do is I won't treat that as the um, parent uh, level sequence just because it's a little bit messy. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new level sequence, call it, and just open that up. Now with sequences, you can just click and drag them into other sequences to make them sub sequences. And that's kind of like a pre-comp inside After Effects. Now, if your project is not 30 frames per second, like mine is 25, you'll need to set it in your master sequence. I'm just gonna set it so that it's the same length as the previous one. Now, so far it's showing it because we've got that there, but in order for it to render like that, we're just gonna need to drag the camera into here so it creates a camera cuts track. Now that look, looks exactly like what we had in the previous version. And you can also see that the focus target is animating as we would like. Focus animation doesn't come through. So I'm just going to come over here and set my focus settings to tracking. And I'm going to then choose our little focus target here. Now, if we turn on that um, debug focus plane, we'll be able to see that it is following our camera focus target exactly. Okay, yep, that's exactly what we're wanting, except for the fact that you'll notice the sections aren't doing anything. So those kind of deformable objects, we're going to need a different way of getting them in. And for the moment, Alembic is what serves me best. It comes in with the most accuracy and I get to time remap it inside Unreal if I need. As an aside, you may have noticed that the camera animation came through without a hitch, even though it's parented to a null. Cineware seems to do really well with any animation that can be keyframed and when exporting seems to bake out all data. If that doesn't work though, if it's constrained in some other way, you might need to bake it out. If you've never baked out a camera before, you just need to have a copy of the camera and you need to then constrain it using a rigging constraint tag to take over the full transform of the original camera by selecting it here. 
Now, if I look through this, it's exactly the same, but it's not parented. And if you come down into the uh, animation dope sheet, you can click on it, click functions and click bake objects. Now that is something that will come through no matter what. So for these deformed objects, how are we going to get them into Unreal? Uh, I already mentioned Alembic is probably the best way to go. Depending on what you need, uh, you might want to export these as a separate Alembic. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all and I'm going to go to File, Export, Alembic and choose Selection Only, Normals and UVs turned on and make sure you set your start and end frame accurately. Uh, we know that we want to bring it in as not a static mesh, but a geometry cache because it's got animation. And instead of flattening tracks, I'm going to untick that. Import. I had made a huge mistake. Cool. Normals were supposed to be found, but none were found. Always good. Let me do this again. Okay. So now I've recreated it as a parametric object with a deformer. I think this now works. That's what you want to see. You want to see that import frames. It just takes a while, doesn't it? And the reason you don't want to um, flatten tracks is so that you still have control over the materials. Let's drag that over into our main sequence so we can then add our geometry cache. Drag that back to where we want it. It's covering the full frame rate, which is great. As you can see, we now have an animated spline across the entire frame range. Now that we can see what we're looking at, I'm just going to create a few tiny little materials just to debug what we're looking at. Okay, promote that to a parameter. And I'm just going to promote all of those to a parameter. Um, hit apply. I'm going to create one material instance, uh, copy here. We're going to make the next red, blue, yellow. Okay, so that is looking like we are hoping. And as we scrub through the sequencer, yep, that is all good. Now these trees are looking pretty good. I'll give you a really quick tip about how to make them even better. In the geometry, we can turn on Nanite, but the one thing you do want to do is click preserve area. So when we save that, take a little look. When we zoom out, it won't just all disappear. Now we can bring in the flag. Flag is exactly the same. It's a, it's an alembic. Should only have one flag shape. Yep, zero to 500. Because this only has one object in it, I can flatten the tracks. Going to import that, drag in this flag, zero it out, and then in the sequencer, change cache as well. So that's fighting with when we did the original transfer, it would have imported it. Delete that. That looks a lot better. So now we have everything in there. We could start to do things like put a texture onto the flag in the background, and at each one of these points here, we can add little flyouts about um, corners and more information like the DRS zones and uh, so on and so forth. So this is my workflow for 2025. We've got a base level transfer using Cineware. For things like the tracks, you can see that we have actually over in Cinema had to take it out of using a sweep and change over to a deformed object. So a cube that's been spline wrapped over the spline. They can be exported directly into an Alembic that Unreal's happy with. Then I can time remap it as I need. Export them as you feel your organizational style will require. I put all the tracks together so that I can time remap them as a whole if I need, but kept them separate from the flag because I don't want it to be affected by the time remapping of the tracks or anything like that. If you do export all of the multiple objects into one Alembic, make sure that you untick flatten tracks so that you have access to the materials. If you do need to deal with old reliable FBX files for cameras or props or whatever it may be, I really recommend the legends over at Cart and Horse. This video here on FBX files is probably the best guide I've been able to find on it. And yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys. Is there anything that I've missed? Is there stuff that you would like to see more detail about? And um, I will see you in the next one.